<clears throat> well, grace and peace, everyone. Welcome back. I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Uh, any leftovers? I mean, I know a lot of turkey salad, all kind of things going on. But this, let me get up my mind off that. But this is, command don't live out that alone. <laughs> but anyway, just, um, uh, this is where God in his word is the final authority. I couldn't even, I started thinking about food. God in his word is the final authority. Now, the last time we were together, it was a great time. I went through the whole book of James, the third chapter. And it, it sort of, it's on my mind about um, the, you know, how to appropriate that scripture. And I was talking about how the, uh, the tongue is an unruly member and and um, James gave us a, a, a painted a picture of a horse with a bit in his mouth. No matter how big that horse is, you can steer, you can control that that animal just with his mouth. Then he talks about a ship, how big the ship it deals with storms and boisterous winds and waves. But yet still, that little him, just like his little tongue, it can steer it. And I thought about. Uh, Whatever we're going through, family, we're believing for our family, believing for your marriage, believing uh, financially to get out of debt, or whatever's going on. That was the answer. The answer was that we can get in the Word, and we can get in the Word, and and um, speak the Word, start speaking the Word over the situations, over the family. What did getting find the promise in the family? What did God say about my family? What did God say about my children? What did God? He said in the last days He's pouring out His Spirit upon all flesh. The first class of flesh, sons and daughters, shall prophesy. They gonna start speaking. That word prophesy is to speak forth the mind and will of God. And so that's a promise. I'll save you and your household. All God needs is one person agreeing with what He said in heaven. You know, and he's get, left us his word to do that. Marriage, you know, everything. You know, forgiveness. I can forgive. You, you know, no matter how much hurt and pain, you can say, Lord, you are the God that healed me. And Jesus said that the anointing was on him to heal the broken heart. Not only to preach the gospel to the poor, but heal the broken heart. So use your mouth as this weapon against those things that have got in your life and trying to get you to think it's hopeless and helpless. You know, God appeared to Abraham in the 18th chapter of, of, uh, of Genesis and says, is there anything too hard for me? <laughs> no, he did the same thing with Jeremiah. He told Jeremiah in the 32nd verse, 17. Um, 32nd chapter, 17 verse, he says, is there anything too hard for me? So, so just trust God. All things are what? Possible to what? He that believe it. And if you believe it with the heart, man believes unto righteousness, and my mouth's confession is made unto salvation. So speak, speak the answer over every situation. Amen? And, and I'm saying this because and I'm going to get to the blessing I said I wanted us to, to uh, talk about. Um, where the scripture says, and I like going to these scriptures. It says, um, Proverbs 21, 33, Whoso keepeth his mouth and tongue, his tongue keepeth his soul from trouble. So I don't have to watch what I say. Oh, it's hard. Oh, I just feel like this. Oh, I... I can't take it no more. Oh, not the flesh can't take it. But you not, Bible says you're not in the flesh. The real you is in the spirit in Romans 8, see. So so lean on, you know, dig, you know, um, access the, the things in the spirit. Galatians 5.23 says the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, all the way down, you know, nine things, nine fruits of the spirit. So acknowledge that. Like I said, we want to acknowledge those things and then, then give voice to them. Believe it and give voice to it. That's just how it is. Acknowledge, believe it, give voice to it. Say, I'm a believer. That's right. And believers believe. So if you believe you're a believer, then you live in the realm of, of possibility, no matter how it looks from the sense realm. Now, and then here's another scripture that says, um, the mouth of the righteous 
man is a well of life. And I like that because he's telling me my mouth can dig in that well and pull out the life. My, my Bible says, um, where's that? Um, Isaiah 12, where he says the, um, um, that with joy I draw from the wells of salvation. Well, the tongue is the dipper. <laughs> I mean, it dips in that well and let it come out. And I decree a refreshing, amen. Now, it says <clears throat> that the, the tongue of the wise is health. So when you say he was wounded for my children, I am healed. I stand on totally all that God did in Christ for me. He was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was placed upon him. And with his stripes, I am healed. First Peter 2.24 said, I, we were healed. See? Because that has already been provided for us. Healing is provided for me. In the name of Jesus, healing is provided for for me. Now, we said in the last session that, um, wow, since we, how can we bless God and then curse men who's made in the similitude of God? So we have to, how do God bless? We keep thinking blessing is about uh, the things, but it's the blessing that make it rich. The blessing isn't a thing. The blessing is the anointing. The blessing is the power, the empowerment that God has put in us and up on our lives so that we can obtain, so that we can obtain things. You know, so so we have to be careful how we bless. That God blessed man. How did God bless man? The Bible said he blessed them and he said. He blessed them and he said. Genesis 1.28 and God bless them. You know, his Adam and his wife. He blessed them and said, be fruitful, multiply, uh, replenish, subdue, and have dominion, and so forth. So we're just saying that how do you bless a person? How do you administer the blessing? How do you... Um, um, I guess the word I'm looking at. How do you appropriate the blessing? By saying, speak well. So cursing is to, a curse means to empower yeah. someone to fail. Empower someone to fail. A blessing is empowering someone to excel or to empowering them to prosper. So our mouth is involved. Listen to what it says in Proverbs 11, 11. By the blessing of the upright. Who's the upright? That's the us, the believer. The who are the righteousness of God. The city is exalted. So how, what will, if, if, I, if the blessing can, can exalt the city, what can overthrow the city? Next verse. But it is overthrown by the mouth of the wicked. And we say so many negative things against ourselves, our cars, our, our house, our sometimes family, our city, people in the city, the economy in the city. And we don't understand the power of words. The power of, and, and things can hear. Things that God created can hear. That's why he told one group, he says, look, if y'all don't want to praise me, the rocks are going to cry out. <laughs> you know, yes, he spoke to that tree, remember? You mean the Bible says in Mark 11, he went and he saw a tree. He was hungry. He hoped happily he might find something thereof on it, but all he saw was leaves. And back in those days when you saw leaves, it's early figs. But there was no figs. So what did he do? The Bible said he, he went hoping to find something. He found nothing. And, and, and he answered the tree. 
When did the tree talk? He answered it. Well, you have verbal and nonverbal. The tree was saying, you don't have no peace. You don't have no peace. Jesus said, look, from, the, from now on, no man will ever eat of this tree again. He cursed it. An inanimate uh, um, object. He cursed it. It hurt him. And I can see Peter them walking. Read Mount Mark 11. They're just walking, probably looking back. I don't see nothing. What about you? I mean, the Bible says when he cursed it, Jesus didn't just walk around the tree and do it like this. Look. He cursed. I'm about to from. Jesus, the Bible said they heard it. He said it loud enough. He put his words on the spot. He said it loud enough so that they can hear it. And when they heard it, I guarantee you they were looking. The Bible said they went into the temple and then came back. And I guarantee you they were, everybody was looking. I don't see nothing. What about you? You see anything? I don't see nothing. I don't see nothing. And then one, one thing, one account of that, it said immediately the tree dried up. And then I said, but I don't see anything. I don't see nothing. And then the next on tomorrow, on tomorrow, the Bible said they saw this tree plucked up from the roots. But but it said immediately it dried up. It did. The moment he spoke, that thing began to dry up. It just took time for you to see it. <laughs> but it, it was done the moment he spoke. And Peter looked and saw it. And he said, oh, master, master, the tree that you spoke to, it's dried up, it's cursed. He said, ah, have faith in God. <laughs> God backs up my words. Like he said, Jeremiah, the Lord, watch over his word. He hastened to perform it. He said, have faith in God. He said, if you have faith of a grain of a mustard seed, you will say. You will say. Mark 11, he said, if you have faith, I'm going to mustard seed. But that's another account in the 17th chapter. But in Mark, he says, if, well, let me just read it because I don't want to mess it up. And this is the power of your words. You can curse and you can bless. You can curse your family. You can curse your city. You can curse your job. You can curse your car. You can curse your block. <laughs> you can curse people or you can bless them. <laughs> and this is what Jesus was telling, showing them how powerful Words are. He said, truly I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart. But, listen, but shall believe those things which he said. Do you believe what you're saying? Believe those things that which he said, it shall come to pass. And you shall, he shall have whatsoever he said. And that's another thing. I heard Charles Cap said this. He says, the Lord told him, people, I told them they can have what they say, but they keep saying what they have. <laughs> Amen. We can have what we say. Oh, it's going to be a rough day. You're going to have what you say if you believe it. Oh, I tell you, it no matter what, anything good happened to me, something terrible happens. Right after. You can have what you say if you believe that. And some people, their belief system is in the wrong place. And this is why I encourage people to get God's word and say it. And you can, you, you can speak to inanimate objects. And they would obey you. And I know, and I know people say, well, that was figurative, literal, or what is it, symbolic. It doesn't matter. The faith principle. Was ever in your way, whether it's symbolic, whether it's figurative, literally. Listen, when you speak, you believe it. You, God says it's going to get out of your way where you can get the way he wants you to get to. And this is so, so important. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Now, I need to start making, getting some confessions. I've been doing more of the scriptures. Um, because I want you to really, sometimes we have people doing things and we don't give them any understanding of what they're doing. The Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. We need wisdom. But in wisdom, in all thy getting, get what? Kind of have understanding. So I was hoping to give you some understanding. 
so that you can, um, when you're saying these particular scriptures over yourself, over your family, over over your, and listen, you, you can change, listen, the Bible says angels hearken to the voice of God's word. And um, remember, angels are hearing you, hearing you, and they're moving. The Holy Spirit is hearing you. Creation is hearing us. And you know, even the world says, well, I got to get it out in the universe. They have some understanding, but they're getting out in the universe as though they're worshiping creation. We're not worshiping creation. Creation was made for us to do God's will in the earth. God gave us the authority in this earth to carry out his will for this earth. Can, can you say amen? So first, um, say I have the spirit of God living in me. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. I have the Spirit of God living in me. Listen to what 1 Corinthians 2.12 says. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things. Wow, the Spirit of God is in me to what? Know the things that I that have been freely given to us by God. And too many of times, I wish I had more time to just talk about this. Too many times I used to read this scripture and then right away I said, oh, I got to do this. I got to do that. I still was in this. I have to perform in order for God to manifest something in my life. I don't have to perform. I just need to believe it. I need to get in the word and see what I have. Get in and, and, and exercise my faith. Remember, faith has a law speaking with your mouth and saying with your heart. Now, I did write down something, and I need to I need to read this. When we, the first confession we made was that we confessed that Jesus Christ is Lord, Romans 10, 9, and 10, believe that God raised him from the dead, and then thou art saved. And then he says, with the heart now, man, believe it unto righteousness, and, and with, and with the mouth, confession, is made unto salvation, your healing, deliverance, safety, soundness. So I wrote this down earlier. When we believe a thing in our heart and confess it with our mouths, then it becomes real. This is why we say do this. It becomes real. And I'm going to tell you, and I know my body, everything fights against me doing the most simplest thing from believing the word and then giving a voice. I mean, it's like everything tries to keep me from saying that. I, I mean, maybe not you, but I went through that period like, how come something so simple is, I mean, I believe a demonic, just, that's where the demonic activity is right there to just to make, just don't want you to get that thing out of your mouth. It, it, it'll just have you mad, upset. I don't see it. We walk by faith and not by sight. Second Corinthians um, 5, 7. But, but this is what happens. When we believe a thing and confess it with our mouth, then it becomes real to you. It's, it becomes real to us or real to you. Faith's confessions create realities. Faith confessions create realities. That's what the word truth is, reality. God's reality that's planted inside of us when we give voice to his word. So that we might know the things that have freely been given to us by God. Romans 8, 11 says, but the spirit of him that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells where? So think about it. I, You and I have resurrection power. We have the person of the Holy Spirit in, living in our reborn, created spirit. We're new creatures in Christ, old things have passed away. But we have resurrection power in us. Well, what is that resurrection power doing? He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life. What King James said, quicken, but it means to give life to your mortal, these bodies that are aging. They don't have to fall apart. If it can raise up a dead man after three days, what can it do with anything else that's attacking us? It's in us. It's dwelling in us. It's not saying I'll be back Wednesday. I'll be back Monday, next month. It dwells in us. 
See? It will give life to you, to your mortal bodies, through his spirit who dwells in you. That's why I say we need to acknowledge, we need to believe, and then we need to give voice. I'm going to have to stop, but listen, and, and here, here it is. I'm going to go right to I am healed. I am healed. Can you say this with me? I am healed. Jesus took all my sicknesses and diseases. Therefore, I am free. I speak life and health to my body in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Proverbs 12, 18 says, There is one who speaks like the piercing. One says, um, um, rash words. In one translation, of a, like a sword trying to cut into you. But the tongue of the wise, the tongue of the wise promotes health. The truthful lip. What is a truthful lip? The truthful lip is one who speaks the word. Bible says, thy word is thy truth shall be established forever. I mean, your healing is established, your deliverance is established, your prosperity is established forever. But a lying tongue is but for a moment. See, lying tongue, what is a lying tongue? It speaks against truth. In the sense realm, it'll say, well, you don't feel healed, you don't feel delivered, don't look like you prosperous. The Bible says, though our light afflictions are only about for a moment, they working for us are far more in 2 Corinthians 4. External weight, eternal weight in glory, manifestation. Stay with the truth. Establish it forever in your life. Amen? Hallelujah. Um, a wholesome tongue is a true life, but perversions, we saw that earlier, breaks down the spirit. First Peter 2.24 says, Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we, having died to sins, might live to righteousness. Say, I am the righteousness of God. I have a right relationship with God. He's my father. And by whose stripes you were healed. I'm pretty much out of time, right? Amen. Yeah, I'm out of time. So, listen. So, uh, I guess I'm, I'm going to probably do another session or so on it. But, but I do want to say uh, you can find these confessions on the website. Get on there. Look at them. Say them every day. Say them as many times. Say them three times a day. Say them as much as you want. Take your gospels as much. There's no side effects. Negative side effects. <laughs> but anyway, just, you know, and, um, but anyway, we want to thank you again uh, for being part of us. If you have not subscribed, we would appreciate that you would. Um, we believe God gave us the word, and we want to great the company of them that published it or got to get to help us get the word out. And we also want to say, um, if you can subscribe, you can also um, share, um, press like, share with family, friends, press like, ring the bell, and, um, and we'll see you the next time. And remember, uh, we are here to do what? Let God in his word be the what? Final authority. We love you, and we'll see you in our next broadcast.